All right, so many of you reached out wanting to know more about getting the most out of your flare tokens and not just from those flare drops. Yeah, we hear. We dove into some key resources, especially the Flare Network's own page. Uh, what is it called? Delegate and Stake FLR Flare. Something like that. That sounds about right. Point is, we want to break down how to juice those FLR rewards, specifically looking at delegation and staking. Exactly. The flare drops were awesome, but it's not a one time thing, right? You can actually do more with your tokens to potentially earn even more. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. Delegation, staking, we hear these terms thrown around a lot. For someone new to Flare, what's the core difference they need to grasp right off the bat? Well, think of delegation as basically you're backing the people who are providing those all important price feeds to the FTSO, the Flare Time Series Oracle. Right. You're not actually giving up your FLR. It stays right there in your wallet. Okay. Staking, on the other hand, that's more like you're locking up your FLR for a set period of time to support the validators. Yes. Those are the folks who make sure the whole Flare network is running smoothly and securely. Ah, okay. So like two sides of the same coin, but different approaches. Precisely. Let's zoom in on delegation first. What does that actually mean? You know, in the Flare world, what am I doing when I delegate my FLR? So you're basically assigning those tokens to a specific data provider on the FTSO. Ah. And what's cool about Flare's approach is that it's super flexible. Okay, how so? You can undelegate whenever you want, no lockup period. It's really liquid. Okay, I see. So it's not like I'm making a huge commitment. Not at all. All right, so beyond just supporting the network, like what's in it for me? Why would I choose to delegate my FLR? Well, the big bra is you get a share of the rewards that the data provider earns. They're constantly feeding this price data to the FTSO. Right. And the more accurate they are and the more FLR delegated to them, the more rewards they rake in. And a piece of that pie goes to you. Gotcha. So it's like a team effort. I help them be more effective and they share their winnings. Now, here's where it gets interesting for me. When I delegate, where does my FLR actually go? And you mentioned something about veto power. Uh -huh. How does that all work? So your FLR goes into something called a token wrapping smart contract. Okay. It's basically a secure escrow. It holds on to your FLR and shows your support for the data provider. Uh -huh. Now, with all that FLR backing them, the data provider gets more veto power within the FTSO. They have more influence on the data based on how much FLR they have behind them. Mm, that makes sense. Then, when the FTSO spits out rewards, they flow back out mm. to you, to the data provider, and some for the provider's work. Your native FLR then returns to your wallet from that smart contract. So it's all tracked and managed in a secure way. Right. Okay, cool. So if I'm delegating, how often do those reward payouts actually happen? Am I checking my wallet every day? No, not quite that often. It's about every 3.5 days. Okay, so fairly regular then. Yeah. Now, this is a big one for a lot of people, I'm sure. If I delegate, does that mess with my chances of getting future flare drops? Absolutely not. Delegating doesn't disqualify you from any flare drops at all. That's a relief. Yeah. So I can potentially earn more and still be eligible for those airdrops. Exactly. You get the best of both worlds. Nice. Now, aside from the rewards, does delegating also contribute to like the health of the Flare network itself? Absolutely. You're incentivizing data providers to give the FTSO good, reliable data. Right. That data is essential for all sorts of decentralized apps on Flare that need real-world info. So your delegation makes the whole network more robust and reliable. So it's like a win-win for everyone involved. Exactly. And just to be crystal clear, when we say delegation, we're talking specifically about supporting those data providers feeding into the FTSO, right? That's it. Got it. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty. How much effort is it for me as a delegator to actually claim those rewards? Am I constantly clicking buttons? Well, initially, the data providers themselves claim the rewards from the FTSO. But the Flare community is pretty awesome. They've built some auto-claiming tools that distribute those rewards to delegators automatically. Really? So it's pretty hands-off for me then? Yeah, you can set it and forget it. You mentioned Bifrost Wallet specifically as an easy option. Are those tools, like, officially supported by Flare, or are they more like community-driven things? Well, the official documentation mentions that the community has made auto-claiming methods, and they do point to Bifrost Wallet as a user-friendly way to do it. Okay. So while it's not built directly into the protocol by the Flare team, it's widely used and recognized. So it's kind of like a trusted third-party solution. You could say that, yeah. Gotcha. Now, what about minimums? To start delegating, do I need a certain amount of FLR? Nope. That's the beauty of it. No minimum FLR, no minimum time commitment. 
You can delegate as much or as little as you want for as long as you want. That's pretty cool. Very accessible. It is. But obviously nothing's completely risk-free. Mm. What are some potential downsides or risks to be aware of with delegation? The main thing is any unclaimed delegation rewards get burned after 90 days. So you want to make sure the data providers you're backing are actively claiming the rewards. Ah, okay. So it's not just set it and forget it completely. Yeah. I need to keep an eye on things. Right. Using those auto-claiming tools can really help with that. Gotcha. So just to walk through the steps, how do I actually delegate my FLR in the first place? The Flare portal is the easiest way for most people. It's got a simple interface where you manage your FLR and do all sorts of stuff, including delegation. And once the rewards are ready, how do I claim them? Break it down for someone who's never done this before. Okay, you can claim them through the Flare portal or a Block Explorer, but the portal is definitely easier. First, you connect your wallet and make sure it's showing the right address. Your main account should be open by default, but you can also use a delegation account if you set one up. Then there should be a section for claiming rewards. You click that and usually there's an option to wrap reward. That turns your FLR into WFLR, which is useful for other stuff like DeFi things, or if you want to compound your future rewards. Then you just click claim, double check everything and confirm it with your wallet. And for that auto claiming thing with the Bifrost wallet or the Flare portal and like the Bifrost claim bot, how do those work? In Bifrost Wallet, it's pretty seamless. You go to your FLR or WFLR, find a menu, maybe three dots or something, and you'll see Delegate. Then in the Rewards section, there should be a View More or Set Up Auto Claim option. Just follow the steps from there. On the Flare portal, it's a bit more manual. You need the Flare address of an executor, which handles the claiming for you. That's where the Bifrost Claim Bot address comes in. You copy that address, go to the Flare portal, connect your wallet, confirm your address, and then find the Flare Drops or Rewards Claim area you'll see spots to put the executor address in. You might be able to wrap your rewards there too. Then just confirm the transaction to set up auto claim. Okay, so delegation's pretty clear now. Let's switch gears to staking. What exactly is staking in the Flare network and how's it different from what we just talked about? So Flare's actually in phase two of switching over to a full staking model. Staking basically means delegating your FLR, your stake, to mm. validators running on the network. Okay. The main difference from delegation is that your FLR gets locked up for a set period. Ah, so unlike delegation, where I could pull out whenever I wanted, staking means I'm committing for a while. Why would someone choose that if their tokens are locked up? The big reason is you're directly supporting the validators on Flare. Those validators are super important. They verify and validate all the transactions and processes across the whole network. They're the ones making sure everything's secure and running smoothly. By staking, you're contributing directly to that. So it's more about supporting the backbone of the network. Exactly. What about rewards for staking? How often do those come around? They're less frequent than with delegation. You get them about every two weeks. Okay. And same question as before. Will staking affect my eligibility for future flare drops? Nope. Just like delegation, staking won't disqualify you from any future flare drop. That's good to know. So staking means I'm supporting the network and keeping myself open to those potential airdrops. Right. Now, in terms of supporting the flare infrastructure, staking seems like it plays a really fundamental role, maybe even more so than delegation, which is just focused on the FTSO. Yeah, that's fair to say. Delegation is important for the FTSO and its data, but staking supports the security and smooth running of the whole Flare network across all its features. So it's a broader kind of support. Exactly. And just to reiterate, with staking, we're supporting those validators, yeah. the folks who keep the network secure and running by consensus. Right. They're the ones receiving your staked FLR and the ones you're directly supporting. Now, what about claiming staking rewards? Is it similar to delegation? with manual claiming or those auto assist things? It's interesting, the documentation doesn't really spell out a manual claiming process for staking rewards like it does for delegation. Uh -huh. It also says auto claiming isn't available for staking right now. Okay. So it seems like the rewards might be added to your staked balance automatically or become available without you needing to do much. Right. But the exact way it works isn't super clear from this document. Interesting. Okay, so that's a key difference then. And what about minimum requirements for staking? Is it as easy to get into as delegation? No, there are some higher bars to clear. You need at least 50,000 FLR to delegate to a single validator, and you have to lock it up for at least 14 days. Oh, wow, so it's a bigger commitment than delegation. Yeah, it is. But after those minimums, you can usually choose how much FLR to stake and sometimes for how long you want to lock it up. 
Gotcha. So there's more flexibility there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that higher minimum and lockup period definitely makes staking a different beast compared to delegation. Are there any specific risks with staking that we should be aware of? The documentation says there's no time limit for claiming staking rewards right now, but it does mention that could change. Okay. So while your FLR is locked up, your earned rewards don't have a deadline for claiming them, unlike with delegation. Right. But it's always good to keep an eye out for any changes to the network's rules. Good point. So if someone decides staking is their thing, how do they actually go about staking their tokens? Just like with delegation, the Flare portal is the main way for most people. But for developers and techie folks who want more direct control, there's a command line interface, or CLI, for managing staking. Cool. So there are options for different levels of expertise? Yeah. Okay. We've gone deep on both delegation and staking now. To really help our listeners, let's compare them side by side, highlighting the key differences so they can make an informed decision. Good idea. So when we look at them head to head, some big differences pop out. First off, who you're supporting. Delegation backs the data providers for the FTSO, while staking supports the validators who keep the whole Flare network secure. Right. Then there's that lockup period. Delegation's got no lockup, super flexible. Staking requires a minimum of 14 days. Big difference there. Huge. The minimum FLR you need is also way different. Delegation has no minimum, while staking requires at least 50,000 FLR per validator. Then there's how often you get rewards. Delegation rewards come around roughly every 3.5 days, while staking rewards are paid out every two weeks or so. Right. Finally, there's auto-claiming. You've got those community tools like Bifrost for delegation, but for staking, that's not an option right now. All right, so they're quite distinct. But it's important to remember that both delegation and staking offer a way to potentially increase your FLR rewards beyond just the flare drops. And both, in their own ways, contribute to the strength and functionality of the flare network. Absolutely. They're two sides of the same coin, really. So as we wrap up, what are the key takeaways for our listeners about delegating and staking their FLR? The main thing is you've now got a much clearer picture of the two ways to potentially grow your FLR holdings beyond just the flare drops. You can delegate to data providers for the FTSO, which is flexible and has frequent reward payouts. Or you can stake with validators and directly support the network security, though that means a lockup period and a higher minimum requirement. We talked about the flexibility of delegation versus the commitment of staking, the lower barrier to entry for delegation versus the bigger impact staking can have on network security, the differences in reward frequency, and the current state of auto-claiming. The best choice really depends on your own preferences, risk tolerance, and how much FLR you have. You got it. So think about your investment goals and which option aligns better with them. Exactly. Here's one last thought to ponder. Knowing the pros and cons of each, how would your long-term plans for your FLR play into your decision? Hmm, good question. We encourage you to check out the Flare portal and the resources linked there to dig deeper and make informed choices about how you want to put your FLR to work. Definitely. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Thanks, everyone.